Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 521. Today is a great day. We are gonna find when are they the same? This is a great lesson because everything that we have been working towards in eighth grade math is leading us up to today. Figuring out when they are the same. This is called an introduction to systems of equations. So here we go. The Iditarod Trail sled dog race is famous for its incredible length and its use of dogs. The sled drivers, known as mushers, start their dog sleds at Fairbanks, Alaska and ride through the snow for several days until they reach Nome, Alaska. Along the route, there are stations where the competitors check in, so data is kept on their progress of each team. Now, here in class, every, every time I like to show this YouTube video on understanding the Iditarod Trail sled dog race. The last great race, the classic story of man versus nature. But how does the Iditarod Trail sled dog race actually work? How long does it take to finish? What do they keep on that sled? And most importantly, why not just drive? Hi, this is me, Eric Ketto. I don't know much about Alaska. In January 2015, I packed up my car, left the lower 48, and drove through Canada to my new home. Now, I work with this guy. Lower 48, already speaking like a true Alaskan. I'm John Norris. I've lived in Alaska for the majority of my life. I've survived the frigid conditions. I've gathered my own food, and I've tamed the local wildlife. I'm basically Daisy Crockett meets Bear Grylls. Very knowledgeable about the 49th state. Okay, so John, tell me about the Iditarod. How did it start? Um, yeah, uh... Hold on one second. Uh, in the winter of 1925, there was an epidemic in Nome. They had to figure out a way to get a bunch of medicine from Anchorage to Nome, and apparently there were only two planes in the entire state, and neither one of them could be flown in winter. Uh, so the governor of Alaska at the time decided they had to have the medicine mushed to Nome. Is mushed a verb? The medicine was sent 298 miles by train, and then mushed, mushed the rest of the way by dog team. But here's the thing. It was a relay, and they actually passed the medicine from dog team to dog team, and no team ran more than 100 miles. Yeah, apparently the modern race isn't really based on that original run. It's more of an homage to mushing in general, because now the teams travel over 1,000 miles. Almost the equivalent of New York to Orlando. So for the most part, it takes place in the Alaska backcountry. But you can watch the ceremonial start of the race in beautiful downtown Anchorage, Alaska. Not a lot of race drama as it's period for show, but you can get close enough to feel that hot sled dog breath on your face. After the ceremonial start comes the official start, which they had to move further north this year because there wasn't enough snow. Correct. For only the second time in the history of the race, they moved the official start to Fairbanks. And just like everybody else, those dogs are going to be really excited to get out of Fairbanks. So there are 79 teams this year. Right, and each team is made up of about 12 to 16 dogs and one musher. And each team of dogs is pulling about 350 pounds, right? Yeah, and these dogs are basically the Michael Phelps of the animal kingdom. They're consuming about 10,000 calories a day during the race. So of course they can't carry all that food, so course officials drop supply bags and checkpoints throughout the entire race. After the thousand miles and tons of dog food, they end up in Nome. Yep, and the record for the fastest time was set in 2014 by Dow CB, eight days, 13 hours, four minutes, and 19 seconds. Uh, what do they get for all that effort? Uh, they get a new truck and some cash that probably just about covers all the dog food. Huh, well, where do we go from here, John? I would suggest you just keep refreshing Alaska Public. Now, there are a couple things that you should have picked out, okay? You heard that it starts at Fairbanks until they reach the finish line in Nome. Did you catch that it was over 1,000 miles? From Fairbanks to Nome is over 1,000 miles. So let's finish reading the rest of this problem. Joyla and her team of dogs have made it through the first five checkpoints. Her buddy Evie left Nome, which is the finish line, on the day they started the race. So that means Joyla and Evie started at the same time, okay? And she's trying to meet up with Joyla and offer encouragement. Evie traveled along the route toward the racers on her snowmobile. The progress of each person is shown on the graph that follows. So you should be looking at your graph. You have a graph that looks just like this one, okay, in your notebook. And we're going to answer five questions. You'll notice that off to the right, you have 
information, okay? That is, uh, you have lines to write A, B, C, D, here we go. So question letter A, which data represents Evie? Which represents Joyla? How can you tell? Well, um, I know a couple things. I notice this is time. I notice this is distance in miles from Fairbanks. So wait a second. Distance of miles from Fairbanks. That means how far is Fairbanks from Fairbanks? Oh, Fairbanks is zero miles from Fairbanks. That's how I know that Fairbanks is down here. Okay, so if this is Fairbanks, which of the individuals was leaving Fairbanks? Well, let's go back. Joyla and her team of dogs have made it through the first five checkpoints. That means that she's one of the competitors. That means that this is Joyla. Another piece of information that gives it away, the first five checkpoints. I notice there are one, two, three, four, five checkpoints. I notice over here, this is four. So to answer question letter A, which data represents Evie? The circles represent Evie, okay? The triangles represent Joyla. How can I tell? I know Joyla is the triangles because the origin, that's zero comma zero, is Fairbanks. Joyla is leaving Fairbanks in the competition. You could also write that Joyla has five checkpoints. There are five triangles. That is how I know, okay? Evie, circles. Joyla, triangles, okay? When did Evie meet Joyla? Now, um, I'm hoping somewhere at home you have a straight line maker, a ruler, um, a binder edge. You could also take a plain piece of paper and fold it up four times, and that'll make a good straight edge, okay? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and draw a line. Um, let's see, orange, okay? If Joyla starts at zero comma zero, and I draw this line through these checkpoints, let's see, that's kind of, that's mostly through all the points, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and draw my lines through there, okay? So go ahead and on your paper, get a straight edge and draw a line that represents Joyla, okay? Now, I need to think about Evie. Now, here in class, students are really tempted to just do something like this, okay? And, and this isn't all bad, um, but the question is, where did Evie start? Evie started in Nome. She didn't start out here in the middle of nowhere. She started somewhere out here. And so what I want you to do is make sure that you start your graph over here. Did you catch in the video that Nome is more than a thousand miles? That means up here is Nome. Nome is 1,100 miles away from Fairbanks according to this graph. Okay, so when did Evie meet Joyla? I'm going to go ahead and circle this coordinate right here. That's where they meet. Remember, the title of this lesson, when are they the same? Right there. That's when these two are the same. So if I were to try and figure out when they were the same, I'm going to draw a line straight down. How many hours is that? Well, that's between 90 and 100. That's probably 95 hours. Okay, 95 hours. After 95 hours, they met. Maybe uh, when could also be described as where. Oh, that's not a very good line. Okay, it's a little bit high. Um, this is somewhere right around 475. After 95 hours and 475 miles, Evie met Joyla. How do I know this? Well, this is where the lines cross. Okay, question letter C. How 
long was the race? Now, the race we heard in the video is more than 1,000 miles. But remember, this is a race from Fairbanks to Nome. And I know that here's Fairbanks at zero miles. And according to this graph, we know that EV started in Nome. Nome is right there. I know how long was this race? 1,100 miles. How do I know? I know that EV started in Nome. According to EV's data, I know that she started at 1,100 miles, which is no. Okay? If at any point I'm going too fast, you can pause and write stuff down. Okay? Or go back and listen if you need. Who traveled faster? Okay? Now, the most common answer is Evie, because she's on a snowmobile. Duh. Okay? But how, how do I see that mathematically? Well, um, notice that from here to here is 475 miles. If Joy Lot traveled 475 miles, how far did Evie travel in that same amount of time? Well, from here to here, that's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 625 miles. So, to answer letter D, who traveled faster? Evie traveled faster because she went 625 miles in the same amount of time that Joyla traveled 475 miles. I don't know what their miles per hour is. That's not really important. What's important is who traveled faster and how do you know? Okay. Next question. Approximately how long did it take Joyla to finish the race? Okay, well, uh, let's get another line on here uh, because I know that the finish line is Nome. If Nome is the finish line, then how long did it take this orange line to cross the finish line? See. Gnome doesn't change distance based on time. Time is traveling in this direction. So as time is increasing, okay, the two of them met here in Gnome, and then they both went to the finish line. So how long did it take? Well, it took her... That looks like 230 hours. So it took Joyla approximately 230 hours to cross the finish line. How did I find my answer? I continued Joyla's line until she crossed the finish line at 1,100 miles. Where that line crosses, I went down to the X value, 230 hours. Now, this is a real life situation that we can see where we are trying to predict the future. Okay, that's, that's the purpose of this uh, exercise, is predicting the future. Where are they going to meet? Where are they going to cross? Where are they going to be the same? Okay, but not all the, not all the problems are this involved okay when it comes down to it what you are asked to do is a problem like for 524 the point where two lines or curves cross is called the point of intersection this is a really important word two or more lines are called a system of equations that's the title of this chapter when you work with data points of intersection can be meaningful as you saw in the last problem they carried meaning okay but what we're going to do is we're going to practice graphing these two lines on the same set of axes. So I want you to write y equals two, negative 2x plus 6 on the left-hand side and y equals 3x minus 4 on the right-hand side. In addition, I would like you to please write m equals and b equals. 
M equals B equals. Now what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to look at these rules, write the growth. Okay, you should be able to predict this. Let's see, what is the growth of negative 2x plus 6? Can you predict that? You should say it's negative 2. I'm going to write negative 2 over 1. That's going to be helpful. So that means the beginning value is 6. Now let's take this information and let's put it on a graph. Here we go. The beginning value is 6. Does that tell me to go up, down, left, or right? Say it out loud. Up, down, left, or right? You should have said up. Up how many? 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't really want all those dots. So here's my dot at 6. Put a dot on your paper on the y-axis at 6. Now that's my beginning value. If my beginning value is 6, I start there. Now I'm going to grow it down to right 1. Down to right 1. I'm not going to leave those uh, triangles on there. I just want dots. Down to right 1. Down to right 1. Down to right 1. You can see each time I go down to right 1. Down to right 1. But all I want are the dots. You could even go in the opposite direction. And you'll notice when I draw a line, it goes through all those dots. Okay? Now notice that is what I expect you to be able to do graphing a line. But this is asking us to graph two lines on the same set of axes. That means I look at my second rule and I decide what is the growth, what is the beginning value. Pause the video and write them down. Okay, welcome back. You have a growth of 3 over 1 and a beginning value of negative 4. Okay, uh, negative 4, beginning value, negative 4. Does that tell you to go up, down, left, or right? That tells you to go down. Okay, down 4. Now it says a growth of up 3, right 1. Up 3, right 1. And you put a dot up 3, right 1. Notice it crossed. Up 3, right 1. Up 3, right 1. And then go ahead and draw your line. The point of intersection. is that point. What is that point? 2, comma, 2. That is the point of intersection. This, notice you're, I'm writing it on the graph. I want you to write it on the graph. This is where the two lines are equal slash same slash cross this point is the point of eighth grade math okay it, it is literally the purpose of eighth grade mathematics if you learn one skill from us in eighth grade, it, it is the ability to graph this line and figure out, oh, these two lines are the same at two comma two, hooray. I learned the point of eighth grade mathematics. That's what I need you to be able to do, okay? Now, we have one more problem. The meaning of point of intersection depends on the graph it is describing, okay? So, for example, in the previous problem, 5-23, with the Iditarod Sundog race, the point of intersection is when Joyla and Evie met because it was the same distance, same time. Okay, that's that was the point of intersection there. Then there was another point of intersection. At what point did Joyla cross the finish line? Well, the finish line and the and Joyla crossed at 
230 hours and 1,100 miles. Okay, that was a point of intersection. The point of intersection depends on the story or the problem that we're dealing with. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. You are going to look at these four problems and you are going to decide what does the point of intersection mean? Well, let's look at A. Um, here's the point of intersection. So the point of intersection is the time when San Francisco and Rio de Janeiro have the same temperature. Notice I started with the X value, then I read what's in the middle, and then I looked at the Y value. Let me say it again so that you can write it. The point of intersection is the time when San Francisco and Rio de Janeiro have the same temperature. Okay? Problem letter B. I'll do A and B, you do C and D. Okay, let's go ahead and start on the x-axis. So in this problem, the point of intersection is the number of tortillas manufactured between handmade and machine made. I said that backwards. Okay, the point of intersection is the number of tortillas and when it costs the same to do handmade and machine made. Okay, it's the number of tortillas that cost the same amount whether it's handmade or machine made. The point of intersection is to just figure out when they're the same. Somewhere in your sentence you need the word same and describing your x and y axis and the two things that are on that. Okay, you're going to figure out C and D. Remember, the point of intersection is a really big deal. And so understanding what it is takes some time sometimes. Thanks for tuning in to today's lesson. When are they the same? Stay tuned for more on systems of equations. Have a great day.